Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, really nice to be back. Last year it was first trial. Now I know everything, <laughs> how to behave, <laughs> where to stand, <laughs> how to move. I said that someone is not looking at this nice picture, nice tasty things. I think one year passed, and I think, you know, how many of you have tried products with insect ingredients? Look, okay, we have a fan club here, okay. <laughs> and I, I hope who tried today at this startup, Polish startup company, the insects? Okay, we still have someone, so okay, but you can still try today or tomorrow. It's very nice that we are like there's B2C company and we are B2B company already with insects, the right ingredients, and today I tell you more on, on a B2B area what we do. And together with me, I have our head of R&D, Aister, so she will help me then afterwards if, if, if you need some special questions or, or welcome in a booth. And what we've done during this year, so of course majority known and here, so what we've done, we made the product ready for commercialization. We built texturized insect proteins and we are ready now to supply up to 80 tons per month of, of textured insect protein. We are running very happily now a sampling campaign in Europe, like sending thousands of samples to food producers and food service companies. And like I say, from knowing and trying and exper experimenting, you know, then it's easy then to get to adapting and including into, into in your production processes. About the market, we talked, you know, we are not, you know, the market change or something. That insect, the right ingredients constitute around forecast 10 billion out of 300 billion market of alternative proteins. So. We're not replacing something or changing, we're just adding some nice features, nutritional properties or some flavor. And I think we are like a spice <laughs> company, like adding a little bit spices in <laughs> into, your, into your menu. Uh, like I said, the landscape, we have alt meat, we have fermented, the plant base dominates, this is a big. And what we've done, we, with textured insect protein, we combined plant and insect, like under the roof, and here we are, we have textured product. Okay, sustainability will skip. And what I want to say that the time to consume or include in the diets, not for everyone, I'm not forcing everyone, uh, has come. Uh, I urge you to, to check the EU Consumer Acceptance Survey run by IPIF. It's also based in Brussels, also a lobby organization that we belong to. <laughs> So, but, but it was first first survey done on consumer acceptance and it's indicated that up to 20% of European consumers already tried and here I have like 60% already who has tried. <laughs> and there was, they indicating that 45% of them said that they rated their willingness to try again between seven and 10 uh, on the 10, 10 scale. So it's like really the time is coming and I think the time is to supply to those who want to find the products on the market. Good, so we have very simple, two products, texturized insect protein, it's like dry mince meat, and we have powder. Powder allows us the vast area of applications. With texturized insect protein, we have it on a more on the meat substitutes, and with the powder, we, we are covering wide range from snacking, confectionery, pasta, and sauces, and I'll show you more on a sampling. So what are benefits? This like meat-like texture. When rehydrated, we have one to two. We have from one kilo of texture to have three kilos of like real meat that we, we consume, we do, it just really tastes nicely. You mix, you can try meat-like flavor. And definitely it has nutritional properties, both from animal and, 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 and plant-based in combination. And these are, by the way, these are our real pictures. We do with trying a lot of with Eister. <laughs> we have weekly trials, testing so different applications. On, so our team is very expert, but we now need external experts to, to, to give you feedback. And for the powder, we we adding even additional like application range. And you know, it's your or your customers or distributors, food producers, fantasy is the limit. I would say <laughs> this, it's, it's no need to say, you need to try, that's why we are sampling and allowing them to try to include it, whatever application might be. And here, like in a meat, for example, meatballs, 
you can enhance it. it, it uh, the powder acts like flavor enhancer, like 3 to 5 percent. It gets a bit of browny color, and it adds to chicken meatball more chicken. So simple <laughs> as, as this. Definitely sauce seasonings, you can add like a thickening effect. OK, pasta enriched with more proteins than confectionery, snacks and bakery, and definitely. And what I talked really, what is now in many startups who act in this area, like during past months, talked to many of our customers who were shipping before, like tens of kilos only, don't know why most ship 10 tons, but they plan this year to increase like three, four, five fold their revenue. So it means that, that they have the customers whom they're selling for trading online shops, entering the supermarket shops like the guys here, entered to Kefu markets, to Ocean markets, and you're starting to find products for the fans of the insect. Lovers, I would say, not everyone. <laughs> so. And that's, in summary, so what we do, like really, we're based on R&D, and I think we have two R&Ds, one R&D on bioconversion, that we are, our guys are working, we have two PhDs on, on bioconversion, how to grow our little animals <laughs> who have certain properties, and even by growing there, we can influence a bit the profiles with the, with the fat, proteins, and other, and definitely the main is uh, like what I still drives, we have our R&D on, on a product and on application. And of course, the main thing was R&D, this extension at our customers, our added value distributors that we are really now actively hunting for them in, in, in France, in Spain, in Italy, setting up, set up already in Germany, adding more. So we eager if you know someone, some small and medium enterprise who are really flexible and fast as me, as us. <laughs> <laughs> so give, give them a shout or, or refer to us. And this is, this is, this is the core of moving fast and allowing, allowing the market. And this is we're still keen on our large scale facility to be built. But like I said, we built now virtual factory that we can supply tens of tons. And uh, our large scale facility is due to be done in, in two and a half years. In Lithuania, with, with large scale investment up to 70, but it's, it's, it, it's to be and yeah welcome to the journey i finished earlier so we have time for q a or we can go trying you know products it's, with it's time for tasting yeah <laughs> time for tasting thanks are there any questions maybe because we still have time for additional questions um if you may yes there is one so can we have one microphone please yeah. here today Hello, thank you very much for a nice presentation. I'm Alex from Associated British Foods. Oh, okay. I have a we question. have to meet or not? <laughs> not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question about the uh, acceptance of by customers of those products uh, in food applications because I last, last two, two weeks ago, I think I went to a pet, pet food conference and even they are still struggling in Europe are there any particular regions in Europe where you see that uh, it's easier to convince? Yeah. Do you plan any kind of education in this, this direction to give people more knowledge to, to, uh, <laughs> to yeah. remove the bias of we I are actually, not going to eat yeah. insects? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. But uh, we were also, we tapped into a bit uh, pet food, super premium pet food producing. We were at Interzoo also hunting and talking to to many pet food producers, definitely. The, the pet owners also, they buy with their brains and eyes. <laughs> and definitely, but, but I think this is a matter of percentage. By the way, uh, this survey is, is the best to show, because like in Germany, this is highest acceptance and the highest percentage of people who try it and who are willing, willing to try some, I don't know, strange or not strange. <laughs> the Germans are so open, <laughs> you know, for, for new things. But I think like, like it depends on uh, how wide, how acceptance also the eating habits, traditions, you know, like Mediterranean, more to the south, you have different food, you know, why you need to include, you know, so like now to Italy going, like North Italy is one where there's ma many food manufacturers who can include and like the export products. So like real differences, it, it's hard because it depends. One is food manufacturing. It's 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 not country biased because you know it depends the export where they are exporting. And for acceptance, I see the. By the way, Europe leads in in insect adoption and acceptance in industrial insect rearing. 
uh, in the world. We were in the US last autumn, and that was really because US lags like nothing personal to guys from US, but two, three, four years behind with the uh, regulatory also aspect. This is due to our and EFSA and, and all, all promotion by IPF organization who runs and we belong and all the industry players. So it means it started from awareness and now it comes ad acceptance. And really we have a visit to our small pilot plant where we started, you know, if 90% of visitors they open to try some with the ingredient, even some are trying direct larva. That's like, the serious openness, when you know, when you understand, then you start and we see, it's like, please, and just, uh, you see, we find our fan club is growing. Like you see, this year we have like 60% here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in, insect ingredient lovers. So 